Hi, I'm Justin Bramstead, and I'm Research Manager at SNS Cycle. They say it's not bragging if you can prove it. And proving it is just what we set out to do. After all, proven performance is our motto here at SNS. SNS has always used the dynamometer to show the increase in performance you can expect when you install our products. We think it's important at this point to say something about what a dyno is, what it does, and what it doesn't do. With this information, we believe that our customers can make more informed decisions about their performance purchases. And most importantly, be satisfied with the results. First of all, there are several types of dynos, but the most common type is the chassis dyno. If your motorcycle shop has a dyno, I can almost guarantee it's going to be a chassis dyno. You can just roll your motorcycle up the unit. Within a few minutes, you know how well it's performing. The basic models measure torque and horsepower by recording how quickly the rear wheel of the bike can accelerate a very heavy steel drum. Torque and horsepower are calculated based on how fast the dyno spins up. More advanced models have a brake that allows us to put a load on the motor at a steady speed. The dyno we use is a DynoJet Model 250i, which has an electric eddy current brake to load the motor. It's also equipped with an exhaust gas analyzer and air fuel ratio meter. This is required for EFI tuning, so we've been using the dyno to measure horsepower and torque. But what are they? Which is more important? Torque is defined as a twisting force that could cause something to turn. In this case, it's the ability of your engine to turn the back wheel of your motorcycle. Torque is expressed as the amount of force applied multiplied by the distance from the center of rotation. Pound-feet is the correct unit of measure for torque, but we usually refer to it as foot-pounds. A good way to picture torque is to imagine that you are trying to get a rusty lug nut off your car. You can only exert so much force on the lug wrench, and hopefully it's enough. If not, you can put a long piece of pipe on the handle and get the nut off. You increase the torque by increasing the distance from the center of rotation. You didn't get any stronger. The other solution is to get your big pal Bubba to apply some more force. Whatever it takes to get your nuts off. So torque measures how hard you can turn your back wheel. Torque is therefore what determines how quickly you can accelerate. Whether they realize it or not, torque is what most street riders are really looking for. With a high performance upgrade, we are going the Bubba route. We increase the amount of force available to turn that wheel. Horsepower is mathematically related to torque. Torque multiplied by the engine RPM, all divided by the constant 5250 equals horsepower. That's why the torque and horsepower curves always cross at 5250 RPM on the dyno chart. The values will always be equal to 5250. Power is defined as how quickly work can be done. How fast can you move your 750 pound bagger from point A to point B? While torque determines how fast we can accelerate, horsepower determines our top speed. So is it more important to be able to accelerate to freeway speed quickly? Or is it more important to be able to hit 130 mile an hour? If I'm not on the drag strip, I'll go for acceleration every time. Another thing to consider is the RPM where horsepower and torque are produced. An engine that makes a lot of torque at 2500 RPM will be more fun to drive on the street than an engine that makes a lot of horsepower at 6000 RPM. Ask yourself this, how often do I run my bike at 6000 RPM? Unless you're a pretty serious racer, the answer may be never. We've done some dyno testing, so let's talk about interpreting the dyno numbers. First of all, you have to realize that dyno results are all relative. Unfortunately, the dyno gives you a number, and people tend to think that that number is an absolute. The problem is that the list of variables involved in a dyno test is huge. So dyno results have to be accepted with a certain tolerance. Values from two different dynos will not be identical, and values from the same dyno may vary over time. Other factors include tire pressure, engine condition, engine temperature, barometric pressure, air temperature, humidity, how well the bike is strapped down, etc. The computer in the dyno attempts to correct for environmental conditions, but our experience has shown 
that they are still a factor. If you put more air in the rear tire, the dyno will show higher numbers. Bogus, but higher. We found that putting a lighter rear wheel on a bike will give us a few more horsepower. Is that cheating? Not if we use the same wheel for all of our tests. We discovered that if the flywheels in the engine are out of true, it can cause the engine to produce less peak horsepower. These are the kinds of things that can cause results to vary. With all this in mind, we try to reduce the variables in our testing at SNS. We have a standard procedure for dyno testing that we feel makes our results as honest and meaningful as they can be. If at all possible, we try to use the same motorcycle for testing a certain product. We always try to use the same dyno and do the testing within as short a time as possible. Tire pressure, the way the vehicle is mounted on the dyno, what gear the bike is in, and a number of other things are standardized for all our tests. That eliminates a lot of variation. A baseline run is done before we install our products, so we can compare our results to stock. Ideally, it's the same bike on the same dyno, so the only difference is the performance of the engine, because that's what we are really interested in. How much more power did this engine make after we installed our parts? So, will you get exactly the same numbers if you install these parts on your bike? Probably not. You may get less, you may get more. The important thing is to do before and after tests to determine the percentage of increase. It's also important to know that if you substitute components in your performance package, all bets are off. Let's say you choose another exhaust system because it looks cooler or because it isn't as noisy. You can't expect the same results. Exhaust systems that are designed for style sometimes are not designed for optimum performance. And performance exhaust systems are often pretty loud. We are comfortable recommending our components in the SNS four-step process. We know what the combinations are and we've tested them. We have proven that they will perform. So we're back to that proven performance thing again. No brag, just fact.